Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to be going through Dali, which is the image AI generator by OpenAI. So this actually is available within ChatGPT now, which is incredible. So you can actually be using ChatGPT as you usually would and then ask for images or upload images for those to be referred to in some regard, whether that's uh, analyzing them and um, yeah, talking about them within your chats or whatever you want to do. So it's, it's pretty powerful that it's got this and I'm super excited to see where this goes in the future. So just one note, uh, personally, as I'm, my background is marketing. And so I've used stock images a lot before. So things like uh, Unsplash and Hexels, iStock, all these sorts of stock image websites that where you can get real, not AI generated, but like real um, photos. I mean, there could be stuff on here that is AI generated. Who knows? Maybe something like this could be AI generated. I don't know. Um, but typically for me, I've generally always used these. And for the most part, I still go to stock images. The reason being is I think there's, there's so many stock images out there and you know that the quality of them is just always going to be on point. For AI generated images though, and, and what AI is incredibly good at is getting really niche and specific on things. So I'll give you an example in a minute as we go through the demo. But yeah, think about if you need an image that is just not going to be available in a stock image library anywhere where you've got some sort of like really specific context, then AI can be quite useful for that. Additionally, you can get images generated in a specific sort of style as well. So that's another cool thing about the AI is it, it can go to realistic, but also cartoonish or whatever sort of you want. So it's pretty cool what options there are. So let's look in the demo now. So I've just said, make me an image of a man. And then I've gone to saying like, can you remove the belt? And that does not work. So there's, there's that limitation there with editing images, it's not that good at that yet. Um, I've found that, yeah, it's pretty hard to do those. So here's an example of something that's like quite niche. I've, you know, if you imagine you're teaching an, a 40 year old Indian female drone pilot, how to change her career to marketing, or maybe she needs to upskill in marketing for her business or whatever. And so you're personalizing a online course for her. Sort of being able to generate images that are like this, where she's got a, a drone there and she's learning about marketing and, it's, and maybe who knows whether this looks like her or not, but um, it's going to be closer than potentially something else. And yeah, it becomes a bit more like personalized and therefore improves the learning experience. So this next one, I said, uh, make an image of an elderly teacher doing a running handstand on a treadmill while in a beautiful modern mansion that has some nice hot plants. The mansion is situated next to the beach in Perth, Australia. The image should look very realistic with the photo. So it's done a pretty good job here for the most part. You might notice uh, the legs are, one of the legs has inverted itself, it's back to front. <laughs> um, this probably will come up a few times if you're doing my online course. It, that AI does, is not very good at understanding how legs and arms work still. It's definitely getting better. I'm noticing there's gradual improvements every time there's like an update, but it's not quite there yet. They're, they're, there's still so many situations where you gener generate an image of a person and there's like a leg the wrong way around, or there's like a second arm coming out somewhere or something. So, um, but for the most part, like this image looks pretty nice, right? 
So then we go into that style that I was talking about. So here I've said like make a Pixar style image of an Australian instructional designer thinking about creating the best online course ever for Coca-Cola's office in New York City. The instructional designer is wearing a pink tie, a green shirt with yellow buttons and a Lakers hat. Uh, so it's done this pretty well. I don't really see a reference to it being in New York, but for the most part, it's listened to everything I've said. Um, one thing to remember as well with AI image generation, the, again, the, the text within images has improved substantially and, and Dali, I can see that they've in compared to Dali 2, it's definitely improved. However, generally when you generate images that have text in them, there will be spelling errors, like almost, almost every time. So, I mean, you, for example, you can see like online, it's not a spelling error per se, but like the L is capital and we're asking for best online course ever. And there's like online course ever, like that gr grammar issue again, and then instructional design in the back there. I think if we zoomed in on that, that looks like it might be Oiteralia or something as well. So there's, there's some weird spelling stuff, but I asked for a green shirt, a pink tie and yellow buttons. Pretty impressive they've done that. <laughs> Australian, so he's, they've done like a, a white dude with a sunburnt nose, which is probably somewhat accurate, I guess. <laughs> um, and then they've got a, yeah, I've got a pretty cool Lakers hat on as well. So it's done a fairly good job. And then I've said... Again, with the editing, this still needs a lot of improvements. I don't think Dali is amazing at re-prompting, probably compared to something like Midjourney, which, and some of the other AI image generators, which probably are better at re-prompting. Um, so here we've got remove the text from the image, make his buttons blue instead. Uh, so his button is green there, then there's, you can't really see any buttons i guess and i said show the time and he's watching it and it's done that that's pretty cool but yeah you can see it's it's made some of the spelling worse i don't know what that is that's like an a and a v in one go and all that stuff's like gibberish and then designer with a double s and a double n <laughs> um but it's still like it's, it's these are pretty cool images and it is you can see it's really trying to listen to us um so then i said make the man look more like Mickey Mouse. And it's interestingly, it's actually said, no, that we can't do that. That's um going against our copyright. So I wasn't expecting that, but um that makes sense. And it said make the man look more like a Disney cartoon character, but it was okay with that one. <laughs> um so it looks like yeah it's given it given him um just yeah bigger eyes. Make an image of a chart about learning experiences improving. Kind of weird, but certainly abstract and creative. Um, okay, so now I've said, okay, I've uploaded an image. So you can see this little attachment bar there. So you just got to click on that and then you can upload an image. So to expand it, says, no, I don't do that. <laughs> um, so that's a limitation. So then I've gone, okay, uh, here's two images. Um, create an image of both of these two people meeting at a cafe and having an enjoyable conversation. And it's done this. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's quite clear that this guy is not that guy. Um, and she is not her, but you can see it's, <laughs> there's, there's certainly similarities. Um, and by the way, these images that I used were actually generated by Dali as well. Um, so we'll have a, oh no, that's not showing for some reason. Uh, maybe it's cause it's uploaded. Um, and then I've tried to do something similar cause I was quite impressed by how it managed to do that. So I uploaded some more and then said, make an image of, of these four people playing soccer together underwater. And clearly again, these are definitely not the same people, <laughs> um, but there's yeah there's there's some similarities i mean like for example this is an african woman with an afro and 
this looks like an Asian woman with long hair. So didn't definitely didn't get that one right. Um, the other ones like the ethnicity look sort of, but well, um, then I asked for like higher resolution. It said, no, can't do that. Uh, I said, turn the image into portrait dimensions, and it did do that. So you can see that's in portrait mode as if you wanted to make it for an Instagram story. So this is quite cool if you wanted, if you needed to do something in, create an image in a certain format, uh, similar to how you should prompt for ChatGBT, you can really provide that context and it should improve what your output is. Then I kind of played around a little bit with lighting here, generating uh, lions with different types of lighting. And you can see, you can definitely see the difference from doing that. And you can also kind of have a conversation with ChatGPT, because remember, this is within ChatGPT. So you can talk about the images with ChatGPT as you go through this process and sort of go between text and images, text and images. So that's a really cool thing to just remember here. Like I've asked which of the generated images would be most suitable for an online course taught to instructional designers. And then it's given me all these different options and actually given me like the logic behind why you would select one of the specific images. So like the one showing individuals engaged in a discussion at a cafe would be a good metaphor for collaborative learning or networking, which are important aspects of professional development for instructional designers. And then another one, the uh, underwater soccer, it could represent teamwork and the unexpected or creative approaches to problem solving in instructional designs. This is quite funny. It's like come up with actually fairly logical um, explanations as, as to why you would select one of these images, uh, which I just wouldn't have thought of. So, um, yeah, it's quite cool. It does understand sort of uh, the, the attributes of each of the images. So uh, go ahead and give it a go. It's a very cool image generator. Still a long way to go, but it's very promising and exciting to see the future of AI image generation.